Hello. Uh, those of you who've watched some of my videos uh, have picked up on the fact that I really dislike unboxing videos and thankful to say this is not going to be one of them. Uh, I'm going to save you guys the aggravation of watching me take a, a knife and open a cardboard box. I, I'm not going to do that. Um, but the mailman came today, uh, Priority Mail, and look what he brought. A uncommon, somewhat rare, Kenwood VC10 VHF converter for the Kenwood R2000 receiver. Um, printed off the uh, instructions and a uh, service manual. There's the service manual here. Um, circuit description, it's kind of nice to have. Uh, block diagram, alignment. I'm not going to get deep in the weeds here. Um, but next, I'm going to show you guys where uh, this thing goes in, and we'll plug it in and hopefully uh, tune it up and start picking up some uh, VHF. Uh, frequencies on the R2000. Here's the back of the R2000 and you can see it has this little compartment, not so secret compartment in the back. It's held by uh, six sheet metal screws and what you do is pop that cover off, hold on to the screws then in its place goes this box. And this is the VC10 uh, converter unit uh, made specifically for this radio. You can see there's where my SO239 uh, VHF uh, antenna assembly goes. You've got an RF attenuator. Uh, you can uh, attenuate the signals by 10 dB. You've got a connector, looks like a, almost like a, like a DIN connector that plugs into this slot right here, VHF converter. And that basically powers up this box. Now, keep in mind this box was made in the 1980s and uh, 80s and early 90s. So it's gonna look very much like a piece of equipment from that era. Uh, kind of looks like an old, uh, almost like a cable box, but um, really excited to have this and uh, start tuning some uh, VHF signals on this receiver. So uh, next step, I'm gonna pull out that back compartment, plug this sucker in, and uh, hopefully tune it up. I'm not going to show you uh, me taking the screws out of the back here. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And um, But we'll get this thing in. We'll get these one of these antennas on. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use the um, AEA or the realistic uh, VHF wideband. Um, the AEA uh, is a um, was a pretty popular VHF antenna in the day um, but you can see I've got the uh, adapter with the BNC and SO239 uh, mail plug on it and uh, I think we'll start out with that one and then maybe do some AB testing so let's get this thing going. soon as I hit pause. <laughs> this is really hard to do uh, one-handed. This is so friggin cool. I'm sorry, but wh whoever at Kenwood thought of this design uh, back uh, in the 80s um, really had their thinking cap on. I, I, I just think this is an ingenious 
uh, modification. Uh, the VHF converter unit is in, antennas hooked up. As you can see, the AEA with the SO239 to BNC uh, connector is on. Got my antennas hooked up. And we've got the VHF converter plug plugged into the socket in the back. I'm really glad I didn't film uh, installing this because I ran into a couple of things. Um, first of all was these sheet metal screws hadn't been off in uh, 20 to 30 years. So um, they were a little stubborn, and particularly this last one whoop, down here on the bottom. That bugger just would not come out. And then um, the other thing which I did wrong and someone would have called me out within a fraction of a second on YouTube. I should have unplugged my power main uh, before I did this. So I doubt I blew anything up, uh, but you know, as always happens on YouTube, uh, folks would have just piled all over me and said, you're doing it all wrong. You've got to unplug the unit first. Well, let's give this thing a whirl and see if we did it right, if we didn't make any mistake. And um, like I said, I doubt I blew anything, but we'll find out. Okay, you guys are going to find out uh, the same time I do. If we did this right, we'll power it up. Uh, tune up to the hopefully to the VHF band and we did it right so let's find out we've got power you know, after a couple of games we've got we're audio the pole series said, all right we're good. done with Amir Johnson he's not doing anything we need something else Gerald Green's inserted in the lineup and to his credit provides a, a big oh. spark he's knocking down threes. turn the lock off the offense, obviously all right that's a local AM station Go up. These are uh, 10 megahertz increments. Just for kicks. Let's turn our mode over to FM because we're going to be coming up on it soon. And watch this display. Bingo! We have FM. So let's. Tune up. We'll uh, see if we can do scan here. Turn the volume up. We've got a signal. Just our carrier. I don't know what's there, but we'll keep going up. Let's go up higher. If I remember, two meters is about 144 or so. I could be wrong. Here we go. One forty six nine seventy. Clear as a bell. What do you know? I'll get to use my squelch. And uh, this thing works great. So thought I'd share this with you. It's not a very common uh, 
modification for this radio. I got a great price on it uh, from our favorite auction site. I did the buy it now and then I haggled with the, the seller. Don't get into a bidding war on these things because people will overpay. There is no way in hell I would pay over 300 bucks for one of those converter units. Um, I'll tell you, I paid about half of that. That's all I'm going to say. So they're out there. They're not easy to find, but when you see one go up, for sale, uh, jump on it because uh, someone else will. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, job done.